Hello, friends. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to Secrets and Seal, Sabbath School Hour. We are so happy that you have connected with us in this program. We have come to the end of the lesson on the study of the book of Psalms. This is lesson 13, Wait on the Lord. Can't believe that we're over now with this quarter. And our new lesson is going to be exciting on the great controversy. But uh, we have an exciting lesson today. And this is based on Psalm 27, Psalm 126, 92, and 131. Those are the Psalms that we'll be studying today. But before we begin, I would like to ask Pastor Salazar to please have our prayer, and then Pastor Gouveia will do the scripture. All right. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you at this hour to study your word and to review what you have uh, instructed in your word for us, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, to teach us, to bring to our minds your thoughts and your words, so that as we share from uh, together and we discuss the lesson, we may point people to you, point them to Christ, as they may know you as a personal savior and as the one that leads us into all truth. Mm. Help us to um, be humble and to again be used by you in a mighty way. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Gouveia. All right. So Psalm 27, verse 14 is the memory text for this week. And it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Beautiful. Well, most our faces are familiar to most of the people here, but if there's someone that is watching for the first time, I just like to acknowledge again those who are here with me. On my right, Pastor Salazar. He is the associate speaker here for Sam TV and Sam TV Latino in this ministry, Secrets and Seal. On my left, I have Pastor Govea. He's my boss, <laughs> senior pastor at the Fresno Central Seventh day Adventist Church. I work as an associate there with him, and it's been great to work with Pastor Govea and also. Every time I come here with Pastor Salazar and Pastor mm. Bor, it's a great time sharing together. Mm. Amen. I'm Perfect. your servant, not your boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Okay, let's get into our lesson today again. As I said, um, the title of the lesson is Wait on the Lord. And we've been studying throughout this quarter different themes mm -hmm. in the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. Themes, Psalms of deliverance, Psalms mm -hmm. that present Jesus our creator, king, and judge. We also studied Psalms of surrender in grief and lament, mm -hmm. glorious promises of God through difficult times, Psalms of deliverance, and you name it. We have Psalms of creation that we also studied. Mm -hmm. So we learned this quarter that the book of Psalms is adapted to the needs of every individual. Mm. That's what we've been learning here. And this last lesson summarizes and puts everything together because... It teaches us how to wait on God mm. in good and bad times. Mm -hmm. Because all these great truths that we find in the Psalms can only be understood in our current situation in a world of sin. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most difficult things for us to learn. A lesson that can be difficult. The lesson of waiting on the Lord in difficult times. Mm. You know, Pastor, I want yes. to just add to what you're saying that I think is a very important point. This concept of waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in our lives, especially in this society, yeah. we're connected continually with the world, right? Right. We are pushed to always move on, like mm. continually, you know, to perform, to work. Uh, I remember if you just go to a big city, New York, Chicago, or something like that, and you'll notice that people, when they get in the subway and they walk through their lives, is always in a rush. They're always in a rush in life. Mm -hmm. This concept of waiting kind of calls against what the world is sort of telling you. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? And I think it deals with that experience of communion with God mm -hmm. that oftentimes we fail to have. And we may be even involved in ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, you all are pastors, we're pastors, we have worked in ministry, but sometimes we fail to have that experience of communion with mm -hmm. God to truly wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna bring this quote from Spirit Prophecy that sort of, I think, lays the foundation to, to this concept of waiting. Uh, notice what she says, many, even in their season of devotion, 
fail of receiving the blessing of real communion with God. Hmm. They are in too great haste. Hmm. With hurried steps, they press through the circle of Christ's loving presence, pausing perhaps a moment within the sacred presence, but not waiting for counsel. Hmm. They have no time to remain with the divine teacher. With their burdens, they return to their work. Not a pause for a moment in his presence, but personal contact with Christ to sit down in companionship with him. This is our need. Mm. This is found in the faith I live by, page 225. Mm. And I think this is kind of why it's so important yes. mm -hmm. to wait in the Lord. Because yes. we need to understand communion with him mm -hmm. and pausing, not for a moment, but to really commune with God to receive counsel, mm. to actually hear what he wants us to do. Yeah. I like to think about of the experience of Martha and Mary. Mm -hmm. We normally think that uh, Martha was the one that was a hardworking person, and Mary was that one that just wanted to sit by Jesus' feet and hear him all the time. But actually, when we think about Mary, we can see that she was also hardworking. I mean, she sacrificed the salary of an entire year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give that perfume to Christ and anoint Christ before his death. Um, we remember that she was the, the one that was right there at the cross, mm -hmm. one of the women that were very close to Jesus when he died. She was right there when Jesus was raised from the dead. He, she was the first person that Jesus appeared to. Uh, even before he ascended to the Father, mm -hmm. uh, he appeared to, to Mary Magdalene. So she was very active and very zealous, but she, like you were saying, she knew how to wait on the Lord mm -hmm. before doing whatever God wanted her to do. Because I think, Good. and connecting this with the story of Peter, I remember Jesus had to really teach Peter, yeah, Peter, that you have great gifts, you're an amazing leader, but you need to follow me, not mm -hmm. go before me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Peter wanted to kill that guy that was trying <laughs> to arrest Jesus. He was just, ah, I'm going to go. He's ready to go. And Jesus was trying to teach him, you're ready to work a lot, but not in the way that I want you to work. Mm -hmm. You need to wait on me. Amen. You need to let me lead. And I think this is the, the balance we need to have. We should be active, but we need to be sure that we're being active, guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the ones that more fully wait on the Lord, that more fully put their hope and their trust in Him, I think are the ones that can be more active and their actions will have a greater impact in yeah. the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And Amen. actually, the lesson, Sunday's lesson has different passages from Psalms that highlight this concept of waiting. Let us read mm -hmm. a few of those. Yes. yes. Uh, Pastor Salazar, could you please read Psalm 37 and verse 7? Absolutely. And then uh, Pastor Govea, please read Psalm 37 again, mm -hmm. verse 9, and then verse 34. Okay. All right. We're going to read those. And, and, and as we read these, let mm -hmm. us think about what are some of the reasons why we should wait on the Lord. It says, Psalm 37, 7, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Mm -hmm. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Mm. Okay, let's stop right there. So this psalm encourages us to wait under what circumstances? What, what is the implication of the waiting in this psalm? Apparently, you are either oppressed or seeing that those that are wicked mm -hmm. are prospering mm -hmm. or are devising schemes to you know, harm God's people, and yet right. they seem to succeed. And the Lord is saying, just wait on me. Mm -hmm. so, so, sometimes we get impatient when there's bad leadership, right? Exactly. When there's mm -hmm. bad mm -hmm. people around us. And, and, uh, That's important. <laughs> and we're like, you know, yes. God, please bring justice. Bring, bring justice. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's actually the next mm -hmm. verses 9 and 34. Mm -hmm. So verse 9 says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And Jesus quoted that in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. yes. And then verse 34. Verse 34 says, um, wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. So and it's interesting that he says that you shall see it. Mm. So in other words, he says, wait, you'll see the evidence. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is 
in the context of Revelation 20, when the wicked will be finally cut off, then verse um, chapter 21 of Revelation mm -hmm. says that God shall wipe away every mm -hmm. tear from their eyes. I mean, the tear in the context of the destruction of the wicked is not that we're going to rejoice in that, mm -hmm. but we shall see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But going back to, to the point of waiting, mm -hmm. um, I think we all long for justice, mm -hmm. especially when we see injustice. wickedness, injustice all around us. But God promises that there will come a time mm -hmm. when he will do justice. Any thoughts yes. on this? Yes, I think um, it's definitely not easy for us to see injustice, mm. to see things going in a way that they should not go, um, to see good people suffering yeah. and evil people apparently being exalted and blessed and mm. prospering. And I think that's why God in his great mercy, he has given us a lot of warnings in his word. Yes. You will see during the time that this world is going to last as it is, you will see wicked people prospering, apparently prospering. Mm -hmm. You will see them having a good time when you are going to trial. But trust in me. Yes. Wait that one day I will set everything straight. We normally tend to be impatient because we mm -hmm. would want God to act more quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, we were used to this human idea that, you know, evil people, they're going to get it. You know, they're, mm -hmm. oh, well, it's <laughs> going to come. And then we wait for years and it doesn't come. It doesn't come, yeah. Well, actually, Jesus, what he promises to us is that one day in the future, when he comes back, everything will be in its right place. Amen. While we are in this world, we need to be ready to know that. I think about the experience of Naboth, for instance, that was murdered in mm. an unjust way. Yeah. He, ne he never saw the justice of God, right? Yeah. He was murdered because of his vine. He had the right to that vine. Jezebel and Ahab were people that were possessed by the devil. And they killed this man. He was maligned. People accused him falsely. Mm -hmm. And he never saw the justice mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. here on earth. Mm -hmm. right. but, and we read that story. Like, how can God allow this? I mean, yeah. a God that, you know, brought fire down <laughs> from heaven. Why didn't he just, you know, did something to prevent this? We do not know mm -hmm. all the reasons that God has right. to allow suffering and injustice in this world. We know a lot, a lot that the Bible tells us a lot. We know about the great controversy and about Satan. And, but we also see that God sometimes chooses <clears throat> to intervene and we see justice being served in a, in a way like the, the colleagues of Daniel that accused him uh, because of his prayer they were thrown to the lion's den. Daniel was delivered. In this life, we could see, we feel some justice, right? But the reality is that that is not going to happen all the time. Yeah. And when we see people that, like Naboth, were uh, wronged, and we see the people that wronged them living, mm -hmm. and these, the people that were wronged maybe dying or going to, into prison or just suffering a lot, this is where true faith mm -hmm. needs to grasp this promise that one day God will do justice. Yes, amen. amen. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, patience, which is actually the lesson here, perseverance, hupomone, mm -hmm. is one of the characteristics of the people of the last days, but it's actually one of their greatest weakness. Mm -hmm. And one example is the parable of the 10 virgins. Mm -hmm we find there a delay. Mm -hmm. They got tired of waiting and they fell asleep. So I believe this lesson is very important, especially for us who are living in the last days. You know, last year for the annual council of the general conference, um, they, and actually this, this happened in 2022 also when, when the general conference session met and there were certain points of concern that our church had in, in our doctrinal doctrines. And one of them was on the doc doctrine of the second coming. Not theoretically, but they call this um, uh, um, apathy for the waiting of, of the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are getting tired mm. of waiting. Mm. People are getting tired of waiting because here we are 2024 mm -hmm. and Jesus hasn't come yet. So. How, how do we learn to wait when there is delay of a promise? In this case, the promise of the second coming of Jesus. 
Well, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that, Pastor, because I was just thinking, as Pastor Gouveia was mentioning, and the experience of injustice and how we are sometimes don't see this happening. I think that we are falling into a, uh, I guess, a trap of the enemy to be impatient and mm. to think that waiting is to despair. You know, we even mock at people that wait, you mm. know, because they're just not really putting anything in action or plans or they don't have any contingency plans. But in the experience of the Word of God, He calls us to wait in the concept of perseverance, to, like you mentioned, develop patience. How can you develop patience, perseverance, if there's not a moment of, or time of waiting, or you have to seek God? And it's not just waiting on the concept of just, well, I'm gonna wait for somebody, you know, till he arrives. It's really more in the concept of what you do while that door or that time extends. What do you do with that experience? Mm. And uh, I remember a lot of our young people, for example, are tired of waiting for someone in the church so they can meet and get married, you know, and mm. they go to the world. <laughs> you know, a lot, of, a lot of young people are, are desperate and they leave the church, they leave their, their identity, mm -hmm. sadly. Yes. I, I've seen this happening so much that it hurts me to see, you know, good Christian committee young people as they turn, you know, 20, 25, they don't find somebody in church, they start, you know. They get impatient. They get impatient. Yeah. They start appearing more and more like the world. They start living like the world, acting like the world. And eventually they find somebody out of the church, mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And their life is outside the world, outside the church. So instead of having that time in their personal experience to say, you know what, I need to commit myself to God and learn to develop this trust in Him, this experience of trusting that he knows best. Mm -hmm. This is really the, about who do you pe depend upon. As a child, you depend on your parents, and the child that really trusts the parents is not worried, you know? It just leaves the big things to the parents. Mm -hmm. That's what God is trying to do with us in the experience of waiting. He's calling us, wait, in other words, trust me on how to solve and lead your life. Right. And this is the opportunity of God to perform for us and to help us to achieve these characteristics of, mm -hmm. of, of, a, of a childlike experience, of a childlike faith right. that he wants us to develop. So Which, ultimately, this is where I think God is calling us to experience yes. a growth in faith. And which that leads us to the next point. You mentioned a child, and, mm -hmm. and Monday's lesson talks about peace of a win mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let us read uh, Pastor Govea 1, yes. Psalm 131 is a short psalm. All right. Um, Beautiful psalm, actually a very tender mm. figure that we find here mm -hmm. of how our trust in God should be. Yes. So Psalm 131st, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty, neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Mm. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. Mm. So here the psalmist is saying, I'm not going to com complicate myself <laughs> with things that I don't understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why Jesus is not coming, for mm -hmm. example, or mm -hmm. why is it that there is sin in the world and why is it that so mm -hmm. much injustice? No, I'm just going to wait. Yes. And the, you know, the, we have a baby and... She doesn't care about things that, I mean, she just cares about being with her mama mm -hmm. and uh, being there with, with, with us, especially with the mom. She feels soothed every time my, my wife is breastfeeding mm -hmm. her. She feels so soothed, mm -hmm. so calm. She falls asleep. Mm -hmm. She's there waiting. So we should be like that weaned child. But what else does this idea of a weaned child convey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, it it conveys a an idea of a, of absolute trust mm -hmm. in the Lord, and mm -hmm. I it's wonderful that you just gave the example of your own child, um, because you know I think that God wants us to be happy with the the knowledge we have right now. Yes. Because there's definitely things that you will teach to your daughter when she is 15, like my son is about to turn 15. Mm. 
uh, I'm thinking in, in about a year he'll be driving, you know. I'm looking forward to <laughs> teaching him how to drive. <laughs> yeah. But you can't do that with a baby that is still, exactly. you know. Yeah. Uh, so I believe God will show us amazing things throughout eternity. Mm. You know, we will, we will mm -hmm. grow in knowledge. But there are some things right now that are just too profound for us. And I think this psalm, to me, this psalm brings a lot of peace. Because yes, there yes. are things that I struggle with. There's things that I don't understand. There's things that I have questions about, but I can just be happy in, in what God has shown me and Amen. know that he is good. A, 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 a child that is uh, being taken care uh, by his mother or her mother, that child is content in the arms of the mother. That child feels, I have everything I need. That child knows that the mother loves him or her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we know that God loves us. We may not understand everything he does, like children don't understand everything their yeah. parents do, but we know that he loves us, and that should be enough for us. Amen. Amen. I would like to add to what you're saying, Pastor, you know, this concept of being weaned child. Mm -hmm. It's not a baby anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a growth. Yeah. There has been growth, yeah. right? It's a child that can, a toddler, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, who, who could understand, who mm -hmm. could do simple things, who could yes. help. Yes. But it still depends heavily on the parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a completely, it's a child that can do th certain things, but is in a learning experience and is willing to learn continually from the parents. And there's growth, but is not independent yet. Mm -hmm. Same principle for us. When we are in this period of waiting on the Lord, God wants us to, again, learn to depend on Him and to seek counsel mm -hmm. from Him, mm -hmm. not from other we in children. I mean, imagine right. a toddler to ask advice from another toddler. Right. It makes no sense. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think that part of the problem with what's happening in, in certain circles and even in the church is that we have neglected the counsel of God, the true counsel of mm -hmm. God, His Word, Spirit of Prophecy, to really give us an understanding of what we're to do, mm -hmm. how we're to prepare our, 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 our churches or, or, you know, our leadership to face these certainties, these uncertainties of this world, mm -hmm. these challenges. And this time of waiting should be a time for reflection, for prayer, for looking into the council and asking God how we are to face these problems that we're seeing in the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the, the answers are in the Word of God, yes. and there's time to do that. But instead of that, we have sort of looked to other toddlers mm -hmm. from the world to try to get the answers. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at Babylon, at Egypt for, you know, ways to remedy the problems right. in our society, in our church. Right. And that is not going to be the answer. Exactly. So I think it's an important call of the Lord to say, mm -hmm. you know what, as a wind child, listen, you don't know what is really at stake. You know, help me. Yes. Come to me and mm -hmm. seek me so that I give you the answer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I like how that, goes, that is an excellent point. I, I like what the lesson says here, which I think also adds and complements what you have said, the childlike trust depicted in Psalm 131 is mature faith that has been tried and tested by hardships of life mm. and has found God to be faithful mm -hmm. and true to his word. That's yes. a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. But yes, it is. Now let us go to our next Psalm, Psalm 126. Mm -hmm. This is a Psalm written in captivity, mm. right? A song of ascents. Mm -hmm. and, and let us read this psalm again, this psalm is short, Pastor Salazar, if you could read Absolutely. Psalm 126. It says, and I love this psalm because as, as a matter of fact, this psalm was uh, sung <laughs> when I was in school, like right, you mentioned. Exactly. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with mm. him. Amen. What a beautiful psalm. Mm. This is echoing the words, and Pastor Gove, if you could read this one, Isaiah 29, verses 7 and 8. Okay. Uh, that Beautiful dream come true, experience. Isaiah 29, verses 7 and 8. 7 and 8. says, The multitude of all the nations who fight against Ariel 
Even all who fight against her and her fortress and distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall even be as when a hungry man dreams and look, he eats, but he awakes and his soul is still empty. Mm -hmm. Or as when a thirsty man dreams and look, he drinks, but he awakes and indeed he is faint and his soul still craves. So the multitude of all the nations shall be who fight against Mount Zion. Mm. Beautiful illustration. So mm. notice that this um, song, uh, actually Isaiah 29 verses 7 and 8 is depicting two realities. One that is mm -hmm. a dream and what is actually reality. Mm -hmm. In this psalm, if we notice, they were actually praising God for his deliverance, Amen. but they were still captives. Mm -hmm. So if they were come back to their senses, oh, we're still in captivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But their minds are going ahead to the future right. deliverance mm -hmm. that God will bring about for them. And it says, we'll sing our tongue and our tongue with singing and then with laughter, mm. it says here. And then they use the illustration of the southern streams and then they're sowing and reaping. Um, so this idea of bringing in the sheaves, the sowing and reaping mm -hmm. and, and, and the southern stream, how is that related to this concept of captivity and future glory, which is actually what the psalm is trying to mm -hmm. convey here? Mm -hmm. Um, any, any thoughts? Uh, well, I think that when they were in captivity, this was a people that knew that God had the power to save them. They Amen. had been in captivity before and they knew that God had the power to deliver them if they would just cry out to the Lord and be faithful to mm -hmm. him. And so they, they were sowing in tears, you know, they were searching for God mm. and they were hoping that God would turn the tables around. And even in the land of their captivity, they were witnessing for God mm -hmm. and there, there were pagans that were being converted to the Lord because of the light that God was shining even through a people that was so weak and that sinned so much. Yeah. But in their hard moments, they would many times come back to God. Amen. And I think there's a good lesson for us today because we are still in this world. We're still in a land where the ruler of this world is yes. not Jesus, is Satan, right? And Paul calls him the God of this century. Mm. So we are in a way, we are in a land of captivity, even mm. though we are free by God's grace in our hearts, we can be free in Jesus, mm -hmm. but we're still in this world and we cry out to God and we sow in tears. We spread the word of God mm -hmm. in this kingdom of darkness so that more people will receive the light of the gospel. And we are hoping for our great deliverance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I, I like this, uh, in addition to that, Pastor Rubea, you know, this concept of experiencing right now the toil of mm -hmm. what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. It's mentioned like we're sowing in tears, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also giving us a sense of what true faith is. Yes. Faith is the evidence, you know, of things not seen, you know, it's like, even though you don't see mm. the result yet, mm -hmm. you, by faith, you can receive that experience of joy, even Amen. though you don't see it right now, you know, you can have that, that's why kind of like a dream, in a mm -hmm. sense, you're like dreaming of what you know can happen and will happen if you believe in the word of God and you know what he will do. But right now, you might not be able to taste it necessarily yes. or be able to experience it, but by faith you can. Mm -hmm. And right. this is where you grow. And, and this is an invitation, I, I think, also to, to wait on God and understand that as we wait on Him, we can have a faith that, yes, He will bring everything to pass in favor of His people. And even though right now is, there's suffering, there is tears, <laughs> you know, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's struggles, there's issues, we can know that in the kingdom will receive that, you know, that Amen. rejoicing, that that mm. that that fact that will bring our harvest yes. along, you Amen. know, with our labor. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Verse four says, again emphasizing this, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the mm -hmm. south. Mm -hmm. And I've never been in Israel, but those who have been there, they they say that California, actually the Central Valley, is very much like similar, like very similar to Israel, Palestine. Mm -hmm. But today we have the technology of the sprinkling system. Mm -hmm. we, we don't need to depend on rain too much. Well, we were in a drought about a year ago, but we got a lot, a lot of rain. Praise the Lord. And uh, mm -hmm. it's doing better. Praise the Lord. 
But imagine people back in those days, they needed to depend on the rain. Yes. Mm. And and there was in the during the springtime, they had the, the early, the latter rain that it would pour out so much that in the south, which is very arid mm -hmm. and desertic, there would be a stream and, mm. and people could could uh, sow and, and reap mm -hmm. with tears. Mm. So with that expectation of, of God, you know, mm. the James 5 says that the, the husbandman, the, mm -hmm. the laborer, yeah. he waits patiently, yeah, patiently. on the Lord mm -hmm. for his former and his latter rain. Mm -hmm. So there, even though they're in captivity, they remember their agricultural days mm. in their land. Mm -hmm. They remember how in dry season, they would wait for the mm -hmm. rain and the rain would come. Mm -hmm. So now also they're in a dry season, if you will. They're in mm -hmm. captivity, but they wait for the Lord to yes. come and bring rain yes. and, and deliver them. And, and this actually points to the mm -hmm. second coming too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Revelation 14 Amen. presents the yes. second coming as mm -hmm. the harvest time. Mm -hmm. yes. So we, we, we long. We long for, for that. Yes. Mm, amen. We mm -hmm. long for the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Yes. And for the glory days of the gospel to return. Let's put it that way, right? Amen. We're going through this drought, through this desert, but mm. we know that God has promised. And as we wait, I think the best way to wait for the coming of Jesus is, as we have been saying from the beginning, to Quiet our souls in his presence. Psalm 46, verse 10 says, Be still and know that mm -hmm. I am God. Amen. And then to give ourselves to his service. We cannot understand everything, but there's things we can do, right? Yes. I remember the, um, uh, the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 26. Uh, he says, If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And mm -hmm. where I am, there my servant will be also. Amen. If anyone serves me, my father, him, my father will honor. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is God. And when he was on this earth, he was fully human. He was also fully divine. He could have explained a lot of the mysteries of life, but his priority was different. Mm -hmm. He was really seeking to save, to, to seek and to save the one that is lost. So he spoke way more with his actions, with his character, mm -hmm. than with his words. Of course, he spoke with his words. His words are the best words we have, right? Mm -hmm. There's Amen. no better words than the words of Christ. But his mm -hmm. actions were amazing. And I think that the best way to wait for his second coming is to really follow what he's saying here. If anyone follows me, if mm. anyone serves me, let him follow Amen. me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. Amen. We need to see where is Jesus working right now? What mm. is he doing? How can mm. I follow him mm. in this time, in this day and age? Mm. I know the future is coming where things will be different, but right now this is the reality I have. Mm. Where is the Lord working and how can I follow him there? Is it Amen. in the hospital? Is it in a visiting a sick person? Is mm. it giving a Bible study? Is it preaching a sermon? Is it just uh, sitting by someone who just lost a child, you know? There's things that Jesus is doing and he wants me to follow him to do those things. And to me, that is the best way to wait to for wait. his coming. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, what just mentioned, brought to my mind, this verse that is found in Psalm 63, 1. And it, it kind of connects with what we we're just mentioning and really actually connecting to verse 20, chapter 126, mm -hmm. where we talked about the dryness and, and, the, and the desert and how this world is in a way. You know, it's full of, there's no, nothing that really satisfies. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you want to try and believe that money, fame, etc., it doesn't really satisfy you. And God, what God wants is for us to long for Him. Yes. To look at this opportunity of being in this world looking for the only source of, of, of freshness, of uh, uh, like a balm for our life. And it says there, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. Mm -hmm. My soul thirsted for thee, yes. my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land mm -hmm. where no water is. Mm -hmm. See, this is kind of the experience that God wants us to do now. Amen. Realize that there's no water in this world. There's nothing that really can sustain us or, or fill us. But if we thirst for him, we look for him, and we know that he has all the answer. He is the only source of, 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 of water, of pure water, of that water, the living fountain. We can certainly have that experience today 
receive that from him. And even though we may not understand or fully see the result, we can trust that he will perform his work in us and give us that experience. Amen. Amen. And, and, and most of us or many people don't feel their thirst and hunger. And we got to ask, unfortunately, mm. yeah. as Jesus gave me a hunger and thirst after righteousness. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I would like to go back to what something that Pastor Govea mentioned, which is actually very true. We find in the sermon that Jesus gave in Matthew 24 and 25, the prophetic sermon. You know, sometimes when we talk about the second coming, and this, there, is no, there is nothing wrong with this. We do it in evangelistic campaigns. We preach about the signs, earthquakes, and pestilences. And, mm -hmm. But if you notice, like, Jesus focused more in that sermon on how to wait for that coming yes. than actually on the signs. Yes. Because the sermon occupies two chapters. Mm -hmm. Only half, or a little bit more than half of chapter 24, he's dealing with the signs. But the rest, he has five parables. Mm -hmm. That deals where, with that. where he, he teaches through those five parables how to get ready, how to wait. Mm -hmm. One of them, you know, the parable of the talents, mm -hmm. using your talents for God. Yes. The, the sheep and the goats, mm -hmm. ministering to those who are sick. Um, the one and the ten virgins, mm -hmm. making preparation through the work of the Holy Spirit in our characters. Yeah. You know, because character is, is not transferable. And, and the parable of the fig tree mm -hmm. that... Uh, we need to be ready at any time. Mm. Yeah. So we, we have these, these parables. Jesus was more concerned about present duty than, than future expectation. Exactly. Or, even yeah. though that is, we need to know where we're going mm -hmm. so that we can plan accordingly. Yeah. But uh, we need while we wait to focus on our present duty. Amen. Okay, very good. Let us now go to our next psalm. Mm. Psalm 92. 92. You know, as a family, we like to read this psalm for Sabbath despers. Whenever we're welcoming the Sabbath, mm -hmm. this is actually a psalm yes. for mm -hmm. the Sabbath. Um, as a kid, I remember my mom would always read it. Okay, the Sabbath is beginning. Come here for worship, my dad and my mom. And, and we would read Psalm 92. But to be honest, growing up, I didn't see the relationship between this psalm and this Sabbath. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to read a few things. But then you, when you read it again, not from the surface, you go deeper into it, you mm -hmm. see that there are two main things mm -hmm. that this psalm is conveying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that relate to the Sabbath. So Man. let us be, the three of us, let us read that. So Pastor Govea, yes. could you please read the first, so the psalm has... 15 verses, the first mm -hmm. five verses, then right. I read the next five, and Pastor Salazar, the last five. Okay, so verses one through five. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp with harmonious sounds. For you, Lord, have made me, have made me glad through your work. Mm. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Yes. Your thoughts are very deep. Amen. So verse 6 and all the way through 10 says, reading from the New King James Version, a senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this when the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that raise it up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is a bride, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. Amen. So we find these words that repeat 
faithfulness, loving kindness, mm -hmm. the works of God, enemies, deliverance, and what does this all have to do with the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a great question. I yeah. think, I actually, I think we can point to, there's two main themes. I would say there's, we could even point to a third one, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's- Yeah, we uh, can bring as many yeah, themes as yeah, we can but, find. But, um, here, verse 4 and verse 5 says, For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh, Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. You know, in the Sabbath, even though we normally, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we see Sabbath, we go to church, and we should. Mm -hmm. But that's not all, right? We should also spend some time in nature. Amen. Thinking about yes. the great works of God. Even in a fallen world, if we go out to the mountains or by a river or mm -hmm. we just look at nature, we can still see much of the beauty and the greatness of God. And it says your thoughts are very deep. When mm -hmm. we try to start to look at nature, not just to understand how, how many minerals and molecules are in this particular organism, <laughs> but we try to really learn spiritual lessons from nature. It's a, a vast, vast domain. We can we can learn so much. It's it's we normally don't do it. You know, we go on a walk, go on a hike, and we're just having fun, and we feel good because God made us to be outside and yeah. to experience nature. So it's a wonderful thing. It says your your work through your work, you have made me glad. You know, if you go out into nature, I go out into nature, I feel happy. Amen. But I remember I was visiting a friend and um, who is a pastor. He invited me to preach at at, um, at a retreat for his church, and we went out in a Saturday afternoon. And we were in, well, actually I preached on the beach, and I could already see some of the lessons that nature mm -hmm. was giving me. But then my friend actually asked his congre his his members, so the members of his church, and myself to go on a walk, and to look at the things of nature and to try to learn some lessons that we can learn and connect them with the word of God. And we learned, we came up with so many things that if we were just walking in a casual way, yeah. we would not appreciate it, you know? So I think we need to be intentional to look at the works of God and praise him on the Sabbath day. Uh, we could do it another day, but on the Sabbath day, we should spend time in nature. Amen. And then this psalm also speaks about redemption. It talks about salvation in different, um, in different ways. I like verse uh, 10 and verse 11 it says, But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire and my enemies. My ears, my ears hear, hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. We know that there's other Psalms that tells us that God is going to put all the enemies of Christ under his feet, mm -hmm. right? And the one that was anointed, we may say that David was anointed. Yes, many priests, kings were anointed, but they were all symbols. They were all types of the one who, who is the true king, the true priest, that is mm -hmm. Jesus, Amen. right? So <clears throat> our redemption is through Jesus. The mm -hmm. Sabbath day is a Sabbath that is a day that we are to use to celebrate the creation of Jesus, the salvation that we get through Jesus, the Amen. redemption that we get through Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. Go ahead, Pastor. No, I was just gonna I was just add to that. You know, the the blessing of the creation that the Sabbath points us to mm -hmm. reminds us who we come from. Yes. You know, who we were made in the image of God. What the Sabbath reminds us of the power of God to create the world. Inter interestingly enough, the verse six declares that the foolish men or the simple man or the brutish man, I don't know how the version mentions, but they will not, they don't know that, mm. nor they understand mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I find myself that a lot of people that are in the world today, people that are successful, that are educated, highly educated, they don't believe in, in creation as we see it in the Word of God. You know, they see Genesis as a, as a fairy tale, as a, you know, fable. Right some sort of uh, made-up story. And I remember just recently speaking with, with someone that I really respect and admire what he does. And, and yet, sadly, you know, he would not 
believe the word of God as we believe. And for him, the creation story, you know, it's something that is not proven by science. And so he went through the science, how the science is, you know, the only thing that is certain. And I, and I asked him a question. I said, you know, uh, I, I said, can you tell me for mm. a fact, 100% sure that science is, is, is unfallible? No, I mean, science changes all the time. Every so often they have to go back and say, we made a mistake, this is not how it is, mm -hmm. because science is continually learning. Yes. And a lot of the facts, they say facts, are actually theories. Mm -hmm. So I said, but you know, this, the difference is that I believe without a doubt in the word of God, and I delight myself in understanding scripture, understanding the creator, and that relationship makes me trust in him. And, and you know, and I said, how is it that, you know, why is that you, for example, uh, you know, why you think that nobody wants to, you know, face death? Why is that, you know, when you're finding yourself facing hardships in health or, or losing a loved one, you don't want to, uh, you know, enter into death? You know, you want to kind of start thinking about what if there's something else, you know? So I said, this is the reasons why understanding the Word of God, really knowing who God is can help you find the answers that, you don't have an answer to right now. Mm -hmm. And and he, he kind of had to agree with me in that sense. He's like, you know, yes, I guess at the end of the day, uh, you know, there is a, they have to think of hope that there has to be something beyond, you know, this life. And I said, well, this is where you need to come to the word because it really helps you understand what the plan of God is for us yeah. and gives you the answer to this question. So I think that the Sabbath really can help us give these answers and yes. find a meaning to life Yes, as we look in this word of God. Amen. 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 Yes, definitely. definitely. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Sabbath points both back to creation. We, as you were saying, I mean, we don't come from an evolutionary process. We have a creator, God, but also points forward to redemption. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so every week, you know, I, I made, I, I try to discipline my mind every week when the Sabbath begins to think of this one a week, uh, you know, nearer the coming mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because the Sabbath is an anticipation. It's the only remnant that we have of that perfect creation in Eden. Mm. So every, every Sabbath actually is God sealing us again because the Sabbath is the sign, the seal of God, mm. the external one mm -hmm. in this last day. So think about this. It's, God is sealing us little by little every week and just preparing us for that future, future glory that he has for us. But our time is running out. Let us go briefly to our last point. Joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. There are several Psalms that speak about that experience that we can have still in the concept of waiting mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, some of those Psalms that we're gonna read here uh, Pastor Salazar, Psalm 5, uh -huh. verse 3. Psalm 5, verse 3. Pastor Govea, Psalm 30, mm -hmm. verse 5. Okay. Psalm 30, verse 5. All right. Psalms 5, 3, which is also a psalm that has been used for, for music for several yes. songs. It says, My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Mm -hmm. Praise Amen. The Lord. Amen. So Psalm chapter 30, verse uh, 5 says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the joy morning. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 50, I have Psalm 59, verse 16 says, mm -hmm. But I will sing of your power. Another scripture mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Also Psalm 92 verse 2, to declare your loving kindness in the morning, we read it, and your faithfulness every night. So what is special about the morning um, in these Psalms? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like the what the actual lesson brings out and mentions and says, morning reveals God's favor mm -hmm. and it's also the typical time when God's redemption is anticipated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like this concept, you know, that it's true. You went through the night, you know, night is darkness, uncertainty, mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you even have seen, but a lot of the things sometimes like earthquakes and, and you know, fires happen in, in the night. I don't know why. <laughs> Almost sometimes, you know, when you see like great catastrophes in the world, yeah. a lot of times they happen at night. So yeah. it's an uncertainty, you know, for a lot of people through the night. But that morning is the, re the, the blessings of God, the redemption of God, the fact that there's the favor of God towards us. So it is a moment for us to meditate and yeah. to praise the Lord as we wake up. Yes, I like to think that even in creation, God wrote the story of redemption. Um, yeah. And when God created the world, he created the world in six days, and then there was a seventh day. But always in the story of creation, you have the evening and then the morning. So there was a dark moment, and then comes the bright moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the story of this planet, we had, it's true, God created everything perfect, but very early because of the temptation of Satan and because of the fall of humanity, we have darkness. Mm -hmm. I remember when Jesus was arrested, he said, this is your time. This is the hour of darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But by God's grace, there was a morning, the morning of resurrection. Right? Amen. And so there's a, there's a time for darkness in this world. We don't know exactly exactly how much time, mm -hmm. but we know it's coming to a close. Yes. We know it soon the morning will come. Amen. 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 Christ himself calls himself the bright, bright and morning, morning, morning star. star. Yes. So it's a blessing. It's a, you know, it's yes. something about being in his presence. Amen. I remember our first summertime here in California, the Central Valley. My wife and I were very excited about summertime because we could go out and camp and mm -hmm. That, was, that has been my only experience when I have desired the morning because we went camping. It was already 100 degrees here in the valley and okay. we said, let's just go to the mountains a little bit cooler. Let us go and camp. So we bought a, we bought a tent and took our things, find a good spot there in the Sequoia National Park. And we were very excited. We did some cycling together during the day. We were warm and okay, good. So at around 10 p.m., we were in the tent. We were just, we, we, we brought something, uh, some few blankets, but not for winter. Mm -hmm. But at 10 p.m., the temperature drops mm. to 30, 26 <laughs> degrees. And we're like, what's going on? And we were just, my wife and I were just as, as close as possible. We were just freezing. <laughs> and we were checking the time. And we're like, when is it going to be the morning for the sun to come up? <laughs> well, we... We failed our test. <laughs> we didn't wait, wait till the morning. Mm -hmm. We had to just get up and, and pitch the tent and go and turn on the car and warm up ourselves and go down the valley mm -hmm. because it was just too cold. Wow. So, mm. so yeah, the morning, mm -hmm. you know, that has been a day that I have desired the, the morning, morning so badly yes. because yes. the sun comes up and, and it can warm up. And may we desire mm. also yes. that morning, glorious morning. Amen. We call it the resurrection morning, right? Mm. Uh, we Amen. often... When people are grieving because of the loss of a loved one that, mm -hmm. mm. that died in Christ, we point them to the resurrection yes. morning. Well, this is the end mm -hmm. of this lesson and well, also the quarter. this quarter. Any final words of encouragement for those who are watching us? Well, I like to think about the promise of Malachi that for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise. We yes. are living in a moment of darkness and cold and <laughs> and uncertainty, yes. but we know that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. And through God's word, and especially the Psalms that we've been studying throughout this uh, quarter, Jesus can start shining in our hearts right now. Amen. Amen. And like, like you said, Pastor, uh, you know, the resurrection morning is what we need to think about when we go through these trials in this mm -hmm. world. You know, Christ said, I am the resurrection, I am the life. Amen. Yes. May he be the life for us, is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends, for being with us and studying the book of Psalms together. Let us never forget these beautiful promises that we've learned throughout this quarter. May we always remember that while we're pilgrims on this earth, we have a more sure word of prophecy that will lead us to a beautiful morning. God bless you. Mm -hmm.